I want to show you some perfect examples of kids struggling. His back is all curved. He's hunching. His tail is in. Now look at the guy over there. If you can tell, that's not the stance of a healthy baby goat. So. and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead in another vlog march episode where I've been sharing a new video every day actually even the weekends for the month of March so if you haven't been keeping up with the series and you're interested leave a playlist up here and in the description box down below so you can check it out and keep up with everything that's been happening we had five births we have quite a few challenges and uh, if you're interested I'm gonna leave it down below now today we're going to talk about when it's time to pull babies from mom. When do I decide, you know, mom is not doing a great job, I'm going to take these babies and bottle feed did, them. And I want to show you some perfect examples of kids struggling. Now that one in particular, he's struggling the most. You can see how he is standing. His back is all curved. He's hunching, his tail is in, and he is very sickly looking. Now his brother, you can see in the back over there, he is pretty much a little better than he is. Now my hopes with bringing him here, it's because I need to start uh, thinking about what could be wrong with him. Now there's a few things, simple things that could be wrong with him. Number one, he could be just cold. Um, number two, he could be hungry. Hungry and cold. And number three, he could be constipated. So those are just the <laughs> Hope loves them so much. She loves babies. She wants to clean them. She wants to be on them. So. Uh, she does great on the bottle. I know that so I have no problem giving her a bottle now These two do nurse from mom, but in my opinion, it's not enough So <laughs> she's trying to look for a teeth from hope and hope gets all freaked out and He does drink a lot from mom not a lot, but he does nurse from mom but he's not insisting on nursing and everyone else every other kid is nursing from mocha and he's the one that is drinking the you know the least amount so he needs to be warm he needs to be fed he needs to have a full belly and he needs to you know I need to keep an eye on him just to make sure that he is uh, pooping and if not, I'm gonna have to do an enema. So that's that's fun, right? Uh, it's not that hard. It's pretty easy actually So I'm not too worried about it if that's the case But I am hoping that with feeding them a bottle that he will start to perk up Now look at the guy over there If you can tell That's not the stance of a healthy baby goat. So that boy and this other boy, they're not doing great on the bottle, and so they're struggling the most. Which Now you can see how he's not hunched up anymore. And this is day two of being inside at night. So be safe and fed. If you have a baby that is showing all the signs that I shared in this video, hunched up, they are not eating very well, they're not gaining weight, they're slow, um, the moms can lay down on them, you know, and they just don't even move. You're seeing all those signs that there's a weak baby, then that is the time that you have to pull those babies. And it's, you know, I wish I would have done that earlier. I think I could have saved that little girl that Mocha had if I was on top of things better when that happened. But she crushed her and I think she crushed her because she was a small baby, because she was slow uh, to move, because she wasn't persistent in drinking and because she needed more than the bottles that I was feeding her 
throughout the day. She needed to be away from mom for a full 12 hours to get a hold of that bottle, to be able to drink more milk, to be able to sleep warm with her siblings and feel safe enough to rest. And then in the morning, be a little girl, be running around. Now, you're probably thinking they're goats, they should be outside, they should be in the barn. Yeah, they should. But in my experience, what happens when there's multiples, and I'm talking about quads and up, uh, what happens is that they are usually smaller in size and for some they're smaller because they're three pounds in my case it's always two pounds something and in the end in the end they end up paying the consequences because they are not strong enough to be following mom around they don't have enough energy to follow mom around and get the milk that they need so because of that they just don't do as well as other kids that are maybe just eight uh, ounces bigger than they are. So the way that I've been doing this is every time I see a kid that is struggling, then I take the babies only at night. So they spend the day with their moms. I try to keep them where I can see them if we're working here in the milk, par milk parlor or whatever. I'm keeping an eye on them throughout the day. I'm making sure that they're not hiding under a water bucket or that they're hiding under somewhere in the barn. So I leave them with mom throughout the day. I make sure that they're nursing. And since I don't know if they're nursing enough, what I do is by the time I'm going to put everyone away at 6 p.m., I take the babies with me inside. And I have this specific setup that's been working really good for one week old babies, so I'm going to share it with you right now. So today I want to show you the setup for keeping baby goats inside. These babies are a week old, so they're not big enough that they would be able or that they would want to get out of here. But the first night I put this washable pappy pad in this um, bigger black container and they cried. Um, maybe every 30 minutes after 3 a.m. Last night, we had to go out to pick up my son uh, from school late at night because they had the track uh, meet. And we had to put the babies in a smaller box to take them with us. And they slept so good. This is one of those, I don't know, I used to use them for storage when we had a house and now it's um, multi-purpose. So what I did is I put this puppy pad, this puppy pad inside this box and they probably just peed once. I was worried to put them in something this small because I thought they're gonna sleep on their own pee but I'm pretty sure that they peed and poop when they got out because I took them out and they started peeing around. So so why is this setup working? Well, I have three babies and when I put the three babies inside this box and I think I have a picture of last night, what happened is that they are so warm and they are on top of each other, they're feeling each other's heart, that they feel safe. When they were in the bigger box, they had more room to spread and they did and they felt cold and lonely and I don't know what it was but as soon as they were put in this box where they were sleeping on top of each other it just works another thing that I want to share with you is when you're gonna put them for the night to sleep and again at one week you can do five bottles a day I think it's five or six I'm doing five and you don't have to feed them at night. Now, if they cry, I do feed them. But when I put the babies in there, I cover them with this blanket. So no matter if we're watching TV, if we have the lights on, if we are moving around, they feel safe and they sleep throughout the night. Last night, they I gave them the last bottle at 8 p.m. And they woke up this morning at 9 a.m. Again. Some people don't want them to go through that long without drinking milk. But if they're not waking up 
to get the milk. In my case, I think that's okay. So with just a big container, a smaller one inside, it really is the greatest setup to keep smaller baby goats. Now, if you have bigger goats, um, you probably will have to get a playpen, those that you get for babies. But we live in a tr tiny area, a tiny space in this trailer, and we don't and we don't have the room for it. So this is the best we can do. And again, still being a week old, this setup is working. And my plan is keep them here at night, put them back with mom during the day. So before we know it, they're gonna be bigger. They're gonna be rested because they're sleeping in here. They're warm and they're safe and then outside during the day playing with their friends, drinking from mom, feeling protected by mom. So it's a really good sharing situation where Mocha gets them gets to be with her kids during the day and I give her a break at night and they really pretty much sleep here and maybe get a couple of bottles, you know, in a 12 hour, sometimes 13 hour period. So this is working really nicely and as soon as these kids hit the four pounds they're gonna be all the time with mom even at night but right now they're too weak they're too small and they're just not heavy enough and not smart enough to run from trouble so i'm sure that if she sat on them she would totally um, now the next crush. morning i bring the babies with mom what I've been doing in particular with Mocha, which are the babies that I'm keeping inside for the last couple of nights, that I put Mocha on the sand, I'll have her have her fair share of grain and alfalfa pellets and everything that she needs for milk production. And while she's eating, the babies are nursing. As soon as she's done eating, I'll bring him outside with the babies and then she spends the rest of the day taking care of those babies as if she was with them throughout the night. I think it's been kind of a challenging season for every single mom, for us in particular, because there are a lot of moms and we ended up having 15 kids out of five moms. Now, two of them didn't make it. I'm gonna have a couple of videos down below that share with you what happened in case you missed them. But having, you know, five moms and right now 13 kids sleeping in a barn at night can get challenging. The kids kind of push into other mother's udders. The moms get upset because everyone is trying to nurse from them. And I think it was kind of a stress for Mocha. And so for the last two nights, while her babies are still small, they're still slow, so they can't really run away from trouble. Um, they're not persistent enough in drinking milk. I thought that the best idea was to keep them inside, keep them warm, keep them safe, keep them together as siblings, and risk um, Mocha rejecting them. But in the end, as I'm gonna be sharing throughout this video, you will see that she loves them more than ever. She protects them, and she actually has a little bit of a fight with Hope, our puppy. The only problem I have with Mocha now is that she's really as upset with Hope because Hope spent the night with Mocha's kids. So she protects them, and she's always taking care of them. And the problem is that Hope wants to take care of the babies throughout the day because she watches over them at night and Mocha is so Mocha is really really jealous which is a good thing because that means she loves those kids but still then there's a little bit of uh, a problem between Mocha and Hope who doesn't care she'll go around the barn you know the other way if Mocha is being a pain but in the end they're both kind of fighting that instinct of protecting those babies which is a good thing now you can see how he's not hunched up anymore. And this is day two of being inside at night just to be safe and fed. And during day, mom is really taking care of him. Actually, she's fighting with Hope, who's hiding somewhere there just to keep her baby safe. But look at the big difference. I'm gonna show you the black one. Can you see how he's not hunched up anymore? He still has a little bit. But if you remember, 
the back legs were kind of against the front ones and he was not doing great and now you can see him he's more awake he's following his mom he is drinking he's peeing and pooping and look he's starting to stretch and not be so hunched up she was doing really good see them. <laughs> they are healthier and happier now that they are safe and rested at night they don't have to you know, be chasing mom with the other kids and now he knows where the tea is and that's just the difference of two days staying inside at night and bottle feeding I'm trying to them. cover as much as I can but if you still have any questions please leave them in the comments down below if I can help you giving you advice in my experience with what I encounter with my herd then I would be more than happy to share that information with you and again as I always say once you have that information you research the crap out of it and then you make your final decision and you know actually decide what's best for your herd and what you're willing to try and what you're not willing to do so it really is the lazy way to bottle feeding them because as they are you know one week old or older they really don't wake up throughout the night at least in my experience the babies don't and as, as long as they are together and as long as they're feeling safe they really they're really I am just babysitting those babies and giving a couple of bottles here and there but it's not really a lot of work to keep them safe and to keep them um, or try to help them grow remember when they're babies they should be eating and they should be sleeping and that's how they grow and when especially when they're that small in my experience they are extra sleepy they're extra tired and they need all that food to make them stronger and eventually we'll be jumping around here in no time so leave your questions down below if you have any or suggestions if you have any suggestions that you think it's amazing works for you please share them down below so I can try it myself and maybe other people that want to or think that they have to bottle feed because there is something happening with those baby goats then I think we all can share different ideas and help each other that way so so if you're new around here please remember to subscribe if you don't mind leave a comment that way you help me with the algorithm and youtube will share more of the video around with people that want to watch this kind of content and and i hope that you're enjoying vlogmart i'll talk to you guys next time